Hi everyone, I'm Tom Letty and I'm an Architect Evangelist at Salesforce. This video is part of our Getting Started with Salesforce Diagrams video series, and today we're going to convert the diagram from our Diagram Anti-Patterns video into a Level 1 Documentation and Implementation Diagram. Now, if you haven't already seen our Diagram Anti-Patterns video, you might want to go check that one out first and come back, but either way we've got a lot of great information for you in this one. All right, let's get started by talking about what level one documentation and implementation actually means. Now you can read all the details about this in our how to diagram pages on architect.salesforce.com, but to give you a quick overview, every Salesforce diagram has a style and a level. So in this case, the style is documentation and implementation. And that means that our diagram is gonna help our audience understand the technical details related to an implementation. Now, level one means that we're showing a high level overview. So even though we're showing technical details, we're gonna to stick to more of a big picture view without getting too far into the weeds. Now, our audience is gonna be business and executive stakeholders and maybe some technical team members who wanna take a step back and see what the solution looks like end to end. So when we make our diagram, we're gonna to wanna to show things that are gonna be the most useful to those types of stakeholders. And an example of the type of diagram we would make is a system landscape, which is what we're about to go do right now. Let's get started. All right, so here we are in Lucidchart with our original diagram, and we know from our other video that this one needs a lot of work. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make a copy because I don't wanna lose anything when I start making changes. And now I wanna get rid of anything that doesn't belong in a system landscape diagram. So these objects should really be in a data model and we also have some lines and text that we don't really need right now. I'm going to leave all the systems and a couple other things too. So emails flow, this form, and these third-party components, they're, they're not really systems, but they're attributes of systems that we're going to want to show in the diagram. So we're going to keep them here for now. And then another thing that I want to point out is that over here it says that we're sending a message to a Slack channel, but Slack isn't even mentioned as a system on this diagram. So we're going to need to add it. All right, now let's add a header with a logo, a title, and a description. And I'm gonna do this pretty quickly, and you can check out our Kit of Parts video if you wanna see this in more detail. Uh, the main thing I wanna point out with the header is that we're fixing some pretty big anti-patterns just by adding it. So a header helps to communicate a lot of information about our diagram that's gonna cascade down to the elements that are in the body of the diagram. Now let's add some cards for our systems. So we've got Salesforce, NPSP, Experience Cloud, uh, we're adding our card for Slack, like we said, and WordPress is here too. Now, just a note, WordPress is not a Salesforce system, but it still belongs in the diagram because it is part of our system landscape. Now let's group a few of our cards together. So we know that Experience Cloud and NPSP are part of the core Salesforce platform, so we're gonna make those into nested cards. And let's also add some product icons for the Salesforce products and some footer icons to show some of the features we talked about earlier. So we have Flow. We have this custom app to capture signatures. And we're using Salesforce to send emails. And in Slack, we mentioned channels. And we also have this form on our WordPress site. Now let's also add these icons to our key to help our audience interpret them. And I'm not gonna spend too much time here either because you can find detailed information about how to do this in our Kit of Parts video as well. Next, let's add some connectors to show the integrations between our systems. And remember, we're keeping things high level at this point, so we're not gonna show that much more other than that the systems are connected to each other. And as a final step, let's get rid of all the old junk and recenter our diagram to see how it looks. Okay, this looks a lot better than the old one for sure. And the most important thing here is that even if somebody doesn't have any other context about this diagram, they're still gonna be able to figure out what it is just by looking at it. All right, but what about all the other components that we deleted from the diagram? Well, those are not gone forever. And in fact, we have some other videos in this series where we're gonna use them in different diagrams that are better fit for other audiences. So make sure to check out our other videos in this series to learn more. And if you found this content to be helpful, make sure to like and subscribe for, for more great videos. Looking forward to seeing you next time.